wrestler in a bottle with the Hart Foundation. It's Bret Hart. It's Jim Neidhart. They are very upset. The fans are calling them nasty boys. We are not nasty boys, they say. They are, in fact, not the nasty boys. I just realized this Janet Jackson song, Nasty Boys, came I was, out of the year. I was going to So I assume that's what the reference was. Brett's upset. They're calling Jim Beer Belly. They're calling me a grease ball. He we're, eating that nasty food. <laughs> we, <laughs> we're going to be the next tag team champs, which is true. And we are the best team there is, the best team there was, and the best team there ever will be. It's just amazing that like nowadays we've got Twitter and all these fans say all this shit. And then some of the wrestlers get gotten to and they respond on Twitter. That is the modern day version of Wrestler Rebuttal. Yeah, actually. This was, you know, we do a WWF magazine and, you know, fans write letters on paper with pens or typewriters. They fold them up. They put them in an envelope. They lick the envelope. They put a stamp on the envelope. They put the envelope in the mailbox. The envelope travels across the country. It is open at WWE headquarters. And uh, and probably the wrestlers never see it. But we must do a wrestler rebuttal. The And it's always the heels. The baby face never bitch about anything. The heels always have to complain about something. And uh, it's a very wacky segment, but I laughed. Mario Mancini faces, as Lord Al called him, <laughs> the Ugandan headhunter Kamali. Yeah, whenever Lord Al Hayes introduces the matches, he always says, scheduled. I love I, that, that I like. Scheduled. It's a very English thing. For one fall. Very English thing. That's, fi- that's fine. So, among other, and I, I'm hesitant to even get into this, but here's the other things the announcer said in the show, or during this segment, in fact. Uh, Johnny V says Kamala looks like a male go-go dancer from Harlem. What? Yep. Uh, talking about his body paint, the moon and the stars in his belly, done by a painter from Greenwich Village. Because apparently Johnny V has never left New York City. Gorilla says the man. I can believe that. <laughs> Gorilla says the manager's name is the Wizard Curtis Eokea. <laughs> Repeatedly, by the way, we had an insane, insane, insane Wizard inset promo. About- I will watch these shows <laughs> until the day I die to see the weekly Curtis Iokea. What in the fuck was he talking about? I don't. He was know. on his way to his eighth reincarnation. Fifteenth. Yeah. Yes. 15th reincarnation. To Singapore. Yeah, Singapore. Yeah. And he was told to uh, to go get this guy, Kamala. <laughs> and then I didn't know the rest of the story because they just cut him off. Yeah, yeah. So Kamala slaughters this geek, wins with a splash. No stupid trying to pin him on his belly. Just pinned him. Although he did still do not understand the match is over. Ernie Ladd suggests Kamala could put away some... Pork chops and a half dozen steaks, mm-hmm. which is kind of a great answer to that debate. Why not both? He also said Kamala weighs at least 800 pounds. Right. <laughs> well, yeah, wow. <laughs> Christ. I uh, I said it last week. I'll say it again. This Curtis Ikea, his forehead, I've seen like Abdullah, New Jack, Dusty. This guy is far and above the most scarred up forehead I've ever seen. Was it him or Ab- Abdullah that would go to the tables and like stick poker Abdullah. chips? That was Abdullah. Well, they that probably was Abdullah. both did, but Abdullah did. Ah, true. Yeah. This guy's gig marks go like halfway back on his head. It's insane. When I was a kid, the first gig marks I remember noticing were the Dynamite Kid. I was sure. a huge Bulldogs fan, so I knew the Bulldogs had a lot of headbutts. And I thought Dynamite Kid had done so many headbutts, his skull was dissolving, you could see his brain. Hmm. You know, I've told this story before, but uh, many years ago, uh, me and, I think, it was, I think it was Matt Farmer. I can't remember who my partner was, but we wrestled Los Vianos, the actual Los Vianos, who, uh, I think it was Viano 4 and 5. I don't remember exactly who. It was Los Vianos. But uh, the, the point of this is, uh, they, of course, you know, we saw them in the back without their masks on. Super nice guys. Gigantic fucking carved up, scarred foreheads. And uh, one of them, I don't know which one was the dentist, but one of them, is his real job was he was a dentist. Think about that. One of the Vianos had a real job. He was a dentist. Mm-hmm. And and he was explaining to me that, you know, the great thing about being a luchador is, uh, is no one knows you're a luchador. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. give me a fucking break, brother. You think anybody at your dental place doesn't look at your forehead and know immediately that you're a pro wrestler? His fucking head was just like... 
Disgusting. Ken Resnick interviews Captain Lou. A lunatic, this man. I don't know if we mentioned this. He explains that he has helped George Steele by taking him to a psychiatrist and a gynecologist. I'm not making that up. He said that. He then claims that George Steele, George the Animal Steele, is the finest athlete in the world. Yeah. I believe he said they put a steel plate into George's tongue to fix a speech impediment. <laughs> That's how you do it? And that George... He had is... a steel plate inserted in his tongue? That makes you speak better? You know anything about a tongue? <laughs> it needs to be pliable to work. Lou says that George is going to help him and Cindy Lauper fight multiple, scler multiple sclerosis, mm -hmm. which he pronounced cleanly and I did not. George merely promises that when Lou tells him to be nice, he'll be nice. And when Lou tells him to be vicious, he'll be vicious with Savage. Mm. You know what seems fun? Cocaine. Wow. Can confirm. <laughs> Joe Murto and Jack Kruger versus Hillbilly Jim and Cousin Luke. Jimmy Hart inset promo about hating country feud and country food and country music and probably country feuds. And the Hillbillies promises the funks and the Heart Foundation are coming for them. We've watched Cousin Luke before. He's atrocious. Yeah. Awful. So, of course, he wrestles the entire match. And Jim only tags in the end to win with a bear hug. I cannot believe we watched this. Don't go messing with the country boy. Why? Did they I take told it off? you guys. I warned you. Why? Who owns they that? They probably didn't have the rights to it or something. Or the That's guy that had the rights wanted money. I don't know. But it was sad. Very, very sad. Resnick interviews the Rougeau brothers. Proto Mountie. They joined the WW, WWF in January. Still undefeated. Want to earn a title match with the Bulldogs. So Resnick asks Jacques about traveling with his brother. And before Jacques can answer, the a door very loudly squeaks open somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> they just left it in. And uh, they say they like the British Bulldogs, but they like those tag team championship belts even more. Honky Tonk Man pre-tape promo. Again, this was bizarre because he was on the show last week. Yes, he cut a babyface promo. Yeah, well, yeah. on this show, they act like we've never seen him before. Yes, they go coming soon to the World Wrestling Federation, a new superstar, the Honky Tonk Man. Let's hear from him. Like, like he was brand new. I was like, I just saw him last week. Well, he cuts a total fucking babyface promo, a babyface Honky Tonk Man. He's doing the shake, rattle, and roll with whoever, Susie or whatever. He's in his old car. I don't know what the fuck he was talking about. Old Chevy convertible. Yeah, but he was he was uh, night long. a baby face, yeah. a honky tonk man. It was fucking Couldn't weird. Couldn't wait to get his hands on Paul Orndorff. Yeah, he's going to get his hands on Paul Orndorff. Mm. Ricky Steamboat versus Roger Kirby. Dude, Roger Kirby, this guy was like quite great actually he was a uh he he uh he actually once teamed with les thatcher did he he wrestled hmm. all over the place right. he uh he was a former nwa junior heavyweight champion and uh, like he just like he was a he was a real good worker and this was like the last year of his career and i guess he did some Maybe that's why he did a little work for wwe and just decided i don't want to be a job guy i'm just gonna quit and so he retired he wanted to be remembered for being, like, really good. Well, he gets in there. He looks like a Wish.com version of Hacksaw Duggan. Okay. And he beats the holy hell out of Ricky Steamboat for a while. Even the announcers are like, he might win. He might win this thing. I believe Roger Kirby got more offense in this match against Ricky Steamboat than Ric Flair ever did. And eventually, Steamboat hits one body slam. I'm sure Steamboat had a ton of respect for this guy. He must have. He must have. Yeah. And we knew he was on his way out in his last match or last year. I'm going to have give him one good match on TV. He hits one body slam, Steamboat does, hits a high cross body, and he wins. I was pretty he, impressed with Roger Kirby. But you could see that, like, he saw the writing on the wall. It was like, he was older. He would have been... He would have been... Actually, probably... Actually, you know what? I think he was exactly as old as um, uh, Dory Funk Jr. So, you know, older guy. Hogan's there. All these giant juiced-up dudes. He's not getting juiced up. He he knew he was going to get, you know, jobber treatment. So writing on the wall. So he retired. Yeah. But uh, yeah, he went all over the place. 
the um the body types at this time you can tell who the guys that are going to get pushed are steamboats in just fantastic shape and uh and the jobbers are all kind of sloppy but then there's the other quote unquote stars and they're sloppy too there's not cookie cutters like i know it's getting better now but back in the 80s it 80s and 90s the 90s it got really bad where everybody was just jacked and there was only one body type in wwe he actually beat danny hodge to win that title my goodness but, yeah roger kirby <laughs> hey guys did you love this clip if so, you should join our channel. Just hit the join button and you'll have full access to every single show that we do. Wrestling Observer Live, Wrestling Observer Radio, The Brian and Vinny Show, all of them in full HD, full length, plus archives of all of your favorite shows. Click join today and don't miss out.